Your panel today are Dr. Michael Cornfield, Dr. Stephen Billett, and Professor Lawrence Parnell. Also joining us, Mary Sloan, your enrollment advisor, and myself, Rinka Trell, as your moderator. Cornfield currently serves as acting director of political management program. He has been an adjunct professor at the GSPM since 1994. He found our semester in Washington program and our Institute for Politics, Democracy, and the Internet. Dr. Cornfield is interviewed frequently about online politics and has lectured on the subject at colleges, universities, and professional conventions throughout the world. Dr. Billet is the director of the Masters in Legislative Affairs. He came to GW in 2002 after an 18-year career in the AT&T family of companies. Dr. joined AT&T as the Director of Government Affairs for Maryland, Delaware in 1983 after working on the Hill for many years. In 1987, Dr. Billet moved to Brussels, Belgium, where he directed the creation and operation of AT&T's public affairs organization for Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. Professor Parnell is the Director of the Master's in strategic public relations. Over your career, Professor Pearl has held senior communications positions in consulting, both the client side and in politics. PR Professional of the Year by PR Week magazine in 2003 and inducted into PR News Hall of Fame in 2009. Marion is your enrollment and admissions advisor. She assists you with the admissions and financial aid process making it easy for you to get started and to pursue your degree. Today is Dr. Cornfield will speak about the Graduate School of Political Management and give you an overview of the political management program. I'll hand over the presentation to Dr. Billet, who will give you an overview of the Legislative Affairs Program. Next, Purnell will speak about the Masters in Strategic Public Relations. And the presentation will be handed over to Mary Sloan, who will go over the admissions and funding portion of our webinar. We'll then answer your questions in the Q&A section. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Michael Cornfield. It's great to have you with us. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the school as a whole, because I think I've been here the longest of the three of the program directors, just as an adjunct. Uh, the Graduate School of Political Management was created in New York City in 1907, so we are in the process of celebrating our silver anniversary. And the basic idea behind the school is that applied politics, campaigning for office, campaigning uh, to get um, your issues before legislatures and regulatory bodies and, and have certain alternatives approved and turned into law, complex to justify having a nonpartisan school that entirely to teaching people how to do that kind of campaigning. So it's always been devoted to combining academic and experiential knowledge. Our founding dean, Chris Arterton, hails from MIT and Yale. Adjunct faculty comes from the campaign trail and from K Street. After a few years, it became evident that the right place for this school was not New York City, but Washington, D.C., because that's where the critical mass of specialists in campaigning uh, live and work. And the GSPM moved to Washington, D.C. in 1994, and became uh, a full-fledged part of the George Washington University, which is a top 50 university in the United States, in 1996. Grown in the intervening years as... Um, as the field of political management has grown. Uh, in Washington today, at the federal level alone, lobbying public relations and political management is now a $9 billion a year industry. It's the third largest industry in, in Washington, D.C., after the government itself and tourism. Campaigning for office, as you probably know, has also grown. It's a 4 or $5 billion a year industry. And that money is not bribery money. It's money that pays is, is paid to and through political managers, sophisticated information and democratic services. Decision makers rely on political management techniques and skills, and the citizenry relies on political management techniques and skills uh, to meet challenges of an ever more complex and interconnected nation and world. Uh, as you can see, 
Uh, we have eight master's degree programs. We also have five graduate certificate programs, which are shorter um, and uh, don't give you a degree, but give you give you um, advanced state-of-the-art knowledge on, on a variety of, of topics. So if we go to the next slide, I will now I'll put on my political management hat and talk a little bit about my specialty. And Dr. Billet and, and Professor Parnell will follow with their two specialties right after that. Management is a course management degree program. It usually takes about two years for students to complete. We deliberately have our classes in the evenings because uh, we expect our students to work um, uh, while they are here. Um, and um, what you do in political management is you master the practical skills and you make the personal connections just as important as the skills and concepts that you need to succeed in this field. We run a campaign today. There are a number of complex elements that have to be coordinated and have to be um, run simultaneously. You need a strategy. You need a message. You need me. You need supporters. You need data, candidates or spokespeople, your organization. You need to negotiate with your opponents uh, and with, with third parties. And you need to know the laws. And each of those skills, uh, resource management, if you will, is something that we teach uh, in, in political management. Next, please. A, an overview of our basic curriculum. As you can see, we have six core courses um, and then uh, a couple of options. The first course you take when you come here is called Fundamentals of Political Management. That's something I teach, and you learn how to apply uh, lessons from political history to current situations. One of the ways in which political managers get a handle on a fast, complicated, uh, shifting political situation is that you can devise a strategy by looking to the past to see whether someone has done something similar to what you're involved in right now. There usually are parallels. Um, and what we do in fundamentals is to how to identify the key characteristics of a political situation and then do quick and accurate research to find that parallel and draw the similarities and just as importantly recognize the differences so that you can and make recommendations. And we teach you how to write memos in that course if you don't know how to write memos. Research methods for political measures is our quantitative course. It won't turn you into a pollster, but it'll turn you into a sophisticated consumer of polls. So you won't get snookered, um, and you'll be able to, to receive uh, uh, the real valuable information out of all of the cross tabs and all of the data that comes back from a poll, and focus groups as well. We take a, a year-long uh, courses to teach you how to communicate in the specialized forms that, that campaigns use and how to devise a strategy to coordinate uh, that kind of campaigning. And that goes from the old forms like op-ed pieces and news releases to the new forms like taking and, and uh, uh, producing videos. Uh, toward the end of your time here, you'll take a course in ethics and a course in political leadership as well. Then you get time to take uh, uh, electives, uh, and you can focus in electoral politics, advocacy politics, or advanced political skills. Uh, you can learn how to raise and spend money. You can learn how to comply uh, your campaign with the law. You can learn grassroots mobilization. You can learn how to run a focus group. We have a class in geography. All of the specialties that I've mentioned, we have a dedicated course to, or it's an important uh, uh, of a course that we offer. Um, and in addition to the courses that we offer at the Graduate School of Political Management, you have time uh, to take courses elsewhere in GW and elsewhere in, in what's known as the, the Washington Consortium of Schools, which includes um, uh, some of our worthy competitors like, like Georgetown and, and George Mason. Finally, on uh, the right side of the slide, uh, you can uh, your education at the Graduate School in Political Management Program in one of two ways. You can take the capstone course in Advanced Problems and Strategy, or you can write a, a master's thesis. Um, and and uh, depending on which you choose, uh, you will have one or, or fewer uh, electives. That's the basis of the program, and I'm going to turn it over uh, to the next speaker, and uh, I look forward to your questions. 
Jeff uh, Cornfield. Now I'm going to turn uh, the webinar over to Dr. Billet, who will speak about the Legislative Affairs Program. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm Steve Billet. It's great to be with you today. Uh, and I'm going to cover a little bit of information in the Legislative Affairs Program. Uh, we are an 11 course uh, master's degree in Legislative Affairs. This is the only master's level program specifically devoted to legislative politics and legislative affairs anywhere. Um, and it is indeed focused on work uh, on Capitol Hill in large part. Uh, like all of our classes, uh, we meet in the evenings to accommodate uh, careers here in Washington. Uh, our classes are on Capitol Hill in the Hall of State. Uh, just adjacent to Union Station. The particular focus of the program combines uh, uh, theoretical component uh, a little more than we do in perhaps some of our other programs uh, with uh, a practical and what we refer to as an applied politics component uh, in the program where we show you how to do things, not just how to think about things. Uh, most of our people are uh, dedicated to careers in the legislative arena, oftentimes on Capitol Hill uh, in legislative staffs or legislative positions uh, in member offices. We have people uh, on Hill uh, at just about every conceivable position from press secretary to legislative assistant to chief of staff. Uh, we have a number of people who uh, work in the committee system as committee staff uh, in addition. Um, we also uh, have people working around Capitol Hill, a number of people engaged in advocacy work as lobbyists uh, go through the program, um, uh, all work as legislative specialists in research organizations, speech writers, and in other legislative-related uh, arenas. Uh, next slide, please. Our curriculum uh, is pretty straightforward. We have four required courses. They're foundational uh, and provide you with a basis for further more particular study. Uh, the four courses are listed here, Politics and Public Policy, Legislative Politics, Executive Legislative Relations, and Research Methods. Uh, the basic statistics course. Uh, from that point forward, uh, you're required to take at least two courses from American Political Process listing and the Public Policy Analysis uh, list of courses. Um, but these allow you to perhaps become more focused uh, in your academic endeavors. Uh, and because we are in Washington, D.C., we're in a, an especially strong position uh, in our ability to attract a lot of talent from uh, the professional community here in Washington. Uh, in particular, over the last uh, two years, uh, we have added a sitting member of Congress as uh, an instructor uh, in classes in each of the last two spring semesters. Uh, we're very pleased about that. When you get toward the end of your program, you uh, have an option. You can take a thesis uh, or write a thesis, um, and about 10% of our students do that. Uh, and all of our students are required to take a comprehensive exam so they can demonstrate uh, an ability that, to synthesize the information from the program and demonstrate their professional fitness for the legislative arena. Pretty much covers it for legislative affairs. Thank you, Dr. Billet. Um, here is Professor Pell to speak about the Strategic Public Relations Program. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you for uh, asking me to join you today. I'm here to talk about the SPR program. <clears throat> and you might be asking yourself, what does the public relations program have to do with political management? Why is it part of this school or, for that matter, George Washington University? And very simply, 
put, my answer to that would be it's our view that in order to be a successful communications practitioner at whatever level you choose, in politics, uh, in a profit or association, with a corporation, or advising clients both here or elsewhere in the United States around the world, you need to understand how Washington works. Washington affects your client, your company, your organization, and how you as a professional can advise people best. It's our view that by being part of the George Washington University and the Graduate School of Political Management, you get the best of both worlds. We'll talk about the program and its particular attributes, but I would suggest to you that the association with GSPM is an asset to this program that's unique among any ones you, other ones you might be considering from a public relations perspective. So to the details, um, our, our program, similar to, to Dr. Billets, is an 11-course, 33-credit program. It takes typically about two years to complete it. Our classes are as well in the evenings as many of our students, probably 80% in the on-campus program work uh, primarily in the field of PR, whether they're working for an association, a nonprofit, or advising companies or organizations. And they need that time, and they're able to balance that. They typically take two credits, I'm sorry, two courses at a time. Uh, and classes are, as indicated here, Tuesdays uh, through Thursdays. Some classes uh, meet on Mondays uh, as well. Our, po our focus, as I mentioned to you before, because of the association with the university uh, and, its, and its credibility in this space, is on public policy in the context of understanding public policy's impact on your communication strategy. Uh, we have programs and activities that teach uh, advocacy uh, as well as personal communications skills uh, that you would need to see in this business, in my view, here in Washington or anywhere else you happen to go. A uh, fundamental goal of what we try to impart to our students is the ability to capture some public attention, impact public policy, hopefully in a positive way, vis vis your client or company, and earn public trust uh, in your reputation as an organization that can be trusted, uh, either as an employer, a business partner, or someone who is uh, in the red industries and not someone that needs to be concerned about the way they conduct their business. So we're in the reputation business, if you will. Uh, employing the public relations skills, we are, in fact, as Steve has indicated, uh, much more of a practically practical applications-based program. While we cover communications theory and uh, have a, well, a strong foundation in research and, and, and academia, this is a program about how to do what we do better, smarter, faster, more effectively for your companies and your clients, and it's taught by working professionals who do this every day. Uh, the indication here from the, the purpose of the photo on the slide, you can see because we're at George Washington University, uh, much like Dr. Billa taking advantage of this in terms of having city members of Congress teaching for him, we've had uh, a, a former White House press secretary and expect that there will be other similarly well-positioned professionals who teach our courses and our programs. So that's the kind of opportunity you get uh, when you come to a school like George Washington University. Next slide, please. The curriculum is uh, very simple. There are eight required courses. These are taught off campus at our Alexandria facility, which is adjacent to Washington, D.C., in terms of a, uh, uh, a metro stop. Uh, and the courses are they range from the basic to the focus. We have a basic course on sort of surveys of public relations practices and principles. We have a writing course. Writing, of course, is fundamentally important to what we do. And you come in with some degree of capability, and we Hope oh, and our writing uh, professor to make that more effective and more better, more better, more effective. Uh, we do have an element here of uh, we do have a course uh, which is titled Business and Budgeting. This is essentially designed to provide our students with a basic understanding of uh, the finance side of things. Not it's not a uh, a course in developing you as an accountant, but it is one that will allow you, much like Steve indicated with the polling, to understand and what the accountants and the chief financial officer is talking about when he or she talks about spreadsheets and income statements. It also te teaches you how to manage a budget and how to deliver your results against those, those objectives. Our electives, you have two. You can choose from two. Uh, in our program, there are several. There are also, as an on-campus student, you have the ability to take electives anywhere here on campus in the political management program or elsewhere, depending upon your area of interest and focus. For example, some of our students are interested in working in the hospitality industry. We have a 
have a, there's a hospitality course in the business school that some take. Some of our students are interested in public health. There's a public health communications course in the School of Public Health. Some of our students are interested in national relations. There are communications courses in the Elliott School. So you, by coming GW, you have the opportunity to take advantage of all that the school has to offer, not just the courses that we have on our list. And we have capstone as well. We do not have, at this point, a thesis option. Uh, though some students have elected to do that formal, informally, Capstone is really designed to apply everything you've been led uh, talked about for the past two years in a real-world situation. Many students will take advantage of this to do a program or a series of recommendations for their current employer or to design something that would be to show someone you'd like to work for. I've had good success stories in this regard, and I'm happy to chat about those later. The bottom line is this is a program that is DC focused but not dependent, uh, and it is one that provides you with access to working professionals in communications, both here and around the world, and uh, comes from a university with, like GW with its fine, its fine reputation. So uh, for that, I'll turn it over to the next speaker. Thank you, Larry. I'm now going to turn the presentation over to Mary Sloan, who is going to speak about the admissions requirements and funding options. Mary? Um, as I mentioned, my name is Mary Sloan. I'm the admissions counselor for the Graduate School of Political Management, so you'll be working with me as you um, start the application process. You can see on the slide the complete list of application and admissions requirements. Um, I'll read them off to you item by item. There's just a few important things to note. Um, we require three letters of recommendation. We also require official transcripts from all of your academic institutions. So if you're somebody who went to more than one college or university, you'll need to submit to us an official transcript from each of those institutions that you attended. We do require the GRE. Our G minimum score is 30th percentile in each section. If you are an applicant who has a 3.0 GPA or higher and three or more years of substantive high-level professional work experience, you may qualify for a GRE waiver. There's a sort of separate brief application process for the waiver. Uh, you can find the waiver form and the rest of the information about that on the GSPM website. Uh, you can move on to the next slide, Lauren. Our international applicants have a few additional application requirements. Uh, we require submission of TOEFL or IELTS scores. Our TOEFL minimum is an 80, but just keep in mind that score is going to change within the next few months, so keep an eye on the website for updates to the score minimum. Uh, we also require, in addition to official transcripts from your university, that you submit a detailed course transcript evaluation. And the transcript evaluation must show all your courses, your grades, and whether or not your degree is equivalent to a U.S. bachelor's. And it must come from an accredited evaluation agency. Uh, you can also find the list of um, the link to the list of accredited evaluation agencies on the GSPM information admissions information page under international applicants. Um, because there's additional requirements for international applications and because we need to allow time for processing of visas, we do advise that if you're an international applicant that you submit your application uh, about six months before the application deadline. Um, but so if you're thinking about applying for fall, you would want to do that very, very soon in order to have time to get all of these uh, materials received and processed. Okay, we can move on to the next slide. Uh, there is abundance of resources here at GW to help you figure out how you're going to pay for your graduate school education. If you are going to apply for loans, you'll need to submit the FAFSA, that's the Free Education for Federal Student Aid. Uh, if you're applying for summer or fall semester, you can submit the FAFSA now for those terms. Um, as long as you've done your taxes for this year, you'll have all the information that you need to complete the FAFSA. If you are a veteran, um, there is an Office of Veteran Services office here at GW that's extremely helpful that will help you uh, figure out what you qualify for and how to sort of navigate the system, get all of those benefits. Um, and then also in addition, of course, to, to merit scholarships, and, um, there are uh, tuition pay plans and things like that. Um, if you need assistance getting connected to any of these resources at the greater university, just let me know and I'll help you um, get connected to those. Thanks. Very. Now that everybody has been waiting for, we're going to answer some of the questions that I've been getting in the chat box. Um, the first one I'll give to you, Mary, because it is about the GRE waiver and how it works. Um, what counts as work experience and what materials need to be included in um, that GRE waiver? Sure. Well, to 
officer submit the GA waiver request form and then a resume. And this can be the same resume that you submit for the um, application for admission. And then there's a waiver statement. This waiver statement is different than the statement that you're going to submit, uh, the statement of purpose that you'll submit for the application because this is very work specific. In this statement, you're going to want to um, write in detail about your work experience and why that would qualify for the waiver. And what the waiver committee tends usually dis decides is, is qualifying is something that would have um, high level managerial, um, budgetary responsibility, um, independent decision making, things like that. Uh, you would submit all of these materials together um, prior to submitting an application for admission or very early in the application process. Um, so okay. Mary Weaver, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Professor Parnell, I've had a couple questions about if you need pre-work experience in PR, can you apply it after your completion of your undergraduate program, or do you prefer that people have work experience? one is fine. We have uh, a good representation from both. We have some students who come to us directly from undergraduate, uh, and we have students who come to us with anywhere from three to five years' experience. And we're finding that uh, that balloon works very well. What ends up happening is those students who are do not have work experience uh, per se are learning from their legs as well as the as instructors, and they catch up pretty fast. So it is not something that would be a uh, hindrance, um, but I will tell you that, that the program moves fast, and uh, the level of expertise, regardless of how much background people have, is pretty high. So we're looking for bright, energetic people who have a desire to learn this business and well at it, and it doesn't necessarily require that they have done it previously. Thank you, Larry. Um, Steve, some questions about how the Legislative Affairs Program is different than the traditional MPA or MPP programs, or so if somebody was looking at law school. Well, it's a good deal different than law school. Uh, law school uh, is a great preparation if you want to be a lawyer. Uh, it's not a great preparation necessarily if you want to work on Capitol Hill. Uh, but work uh, a good deal different than most traditional public policy programs uh, in that there is an emphasis in the applied component uh, in the program where uh, we offer courses, for instance, in legislative drafting where you actually learn how to write legislation, uh, where you work in addition uh, with the budget, and uh, there are courses offered in advanced legislative procedure. So it's a good deal different than um, most of the issue focus that you tend to find in public policy programs. And we certainly don't deal with the econometric types of tools that you see in those particular programs. We do at the same time uh, uh, offer a, a group of courses that are specific in some issue areas, but they, again, focus on of the applied components um, of those two areas. So there are courses on defense policy and energy and uh, financial regulation, uh, telecommunications, labor politics, but uh, uh, and we certainly examine um, the prevailing issues in those those particular courses. But uh, we don't take the uh, same approach as you would find in a public policy school where there's an application of uh, some public policy approaches to the analysis of those issues. So that's a, a significant difference between and public policy and law school for that matter. Thank you, Dr. Billet. Um, Dr. Cornfield, uh, what kind of fields do the degree go toward? Is it strictly for campaigners, or is it well suited for the nonprofit sector as well? Can you just give a few words on where our alumni end up? In it, running for office, which is the most well known uh, and glamorous uh, form of campaigning, any organization that, that tries to round up public support in order to achieve one of its goals in a competitive, complex situation needs to know how to put together a campaign. So our students end up with corporations, with nonprofits, with labor unions, with foreign governments, 
Uh, and of course, with people running for office at every level in every country uh, that that has uh, a, a democratic system. So uh, know how the various parts of a campaign together, knowing how to perform one or two of those 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 complex activities uh, is a, a versatile skill set to bring into the marketplace. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Mary, are the financial aid deadlines different than the application deadlines? They are. The priority deadline for summer submission of financial aid application is March 1st, and for fall is May 1st. If you're thinking about or have already applied for summer, don't let that deter you. That's the priority deadline. Um, but it is still, still possible to get um, student aid for summer semester. And if you're interested in fall, it's a good idea to start that process now. Uh, one, I guess I'll direct towards Michael first, but then um, Steve can answer second. Uh, we have questions about the undergraduate degrees, and is there um, is there an emphasis on specific undergraduate degrees in the related field, um, or or is any undergraduate degree okay? Start by saying that if you want to get involved in uh, campaign politics at the highest level. Level. Um, and and consider uh, campaigning uh, as a as a career option. Uh, you do not have to be a political science undergrad. Uh, you have to have a uh, and uh, a, a passion for politics. You have to have basic. Um, uh, you do have to have a good GPA. Uh, and if you don't have a good G a GPA uh, or GRE scores, uh, we look secondly when you're admitting um, to outstanding performance in uh, a work uh, uh, situation where campaigning was was a part of of, of what you did. So, so this, at least for for our uh, program, and I'll let the other two speak for for, for themselves. Um, if of politics, this is the place for you, and and you'll self-select. You'll know whether it's right for you, even if you were a biology major. So. I would agree with uh, Michael's uh, analysis here. We have had students enter this program from just about every imaginable discipline, from there to biology and uh, geology to uh, mathematics. Um, and they've done well. Uh, there may be some catching up to do when it comes to uh, uh, some of the fundamental uh, information. We try to help folks to uh, line them up to speed. Uh, and as Michael suggested, um, we're a place for political junkies. Uh, if you're into politics and if it, it's the thing that really drives you and you're sure that this is an arena you want to work in, these are the programs for you. This is the place to be. Now, the one thing I would say about your undergraduate preparation, uh, I, I, and we emphasize this uh, in everything we do around here, is to pay some considerable attention to your writing skills, because we certainly do. Uh, and we are uh, especially concerned that when you leave here, you not only have the knowledge in your head, that you're able to put it on paper. Uh, we find that there is um, uh, a very high correlation uh, between career success and your ability to write. So if you have the chance to work on your uh, skills, you certainly should. Oh, but one of the other things um, uh, that you might want to do if you're here in the area uh, is to get in touch with us, get in touch with Lauren or uh, Angela Ferragamo or other people here. Uh, uh, you're welcome to come and sit in on our classes. We're happy to have, have you come visit. Uh, you, see, you get a sense of what's going on here. Thank you, Dr. Billett. Mary, there's a question about um, if once somebody has been out of school for a while and they don't have re academic reference, are you penalized for only having one type of reference? 
that's actually not uncommon at all. We have a lot of um, people who apply to the programs who have been um, out of school for several years starting a career. So that's absolutely acceptable and, and not at all uncommon. All right. Michael, uh, should a candidate take any courses in statistics to both their skills, or do we have a standard class that students take? The standard class to make sure that, as I suggested, that, that you're, you're, you're number literate, uh, that you know how to read a poll, uh, that you know how to uh, 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 perform certain uh, basic statistical operations, uh, uh, but uh, uh, whether you have a, a, a background in statistics or not, um, I'd say uh, it's really, uh, becoming a very marketable aspect of, of the politics and campaign profession. Um, uh, as, as we move into more digital media uh, and more and more data is collected uh, for purposes, uh, for message testing, um, uh, people with um, skill sets uh, in quantitative methods are, are, are being hired uh, by, by the top campaigns, the, the, the presidential campaigns, right at route of school and, and given important positions. Um, if you're not quantitatively oriented, um, we're, we've got your back on that too. We'll make sure you know uh, what you need to know, uh, and you can specialize in in, in something else. So um, there is there are advantages to bringing a statistical background to political management, uh, but it's not absolutely necessary. So, Dalit, I have some questions about the Army Congressional Fellowship Program that we have. Could you speak a little bit about that program? Uh, I'd be happy to. Um, uh, about ago, uh, we went into an agreement with the U.S. Army's Office of Congressional Legislative Liaison, uh, and in that program, we have uh, brought in uh, and have every year uh, 25 Army fellows uh, who join us every year. They're integrated with the rest of our uh, legislative affairs students. Uh, they an accelerated program, actually finished the course in a year, uh, and about thirds of the way through the academic program, they deploy on Capitol Hill uh, with member offices, uh, sometimes with committee staff, uh, and then complete here on the Hill as congressional fellows. Uh, uh, we're proud, pleased to have uh, this relationship with the Army. We think that they enhance our program uh, and add uh, a level to the discussion in the classroom that's certainly beneficial to all of our students. Uh, but uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you, Dr. Bowett. Uh, Dr. Cornfield, can you speak about the 400 required hours of field work requirement for the political management degree? Uh, four hours, again, is, is 10 weeks. So 40 hour weeks. So, so it doesn't seems daunting uh, uh, in, in the doing as it might as a, as a, as a number. Furthermore, um, you'll find that uh, it's a valuable and exciting part of your education. Um, you will be doing as well as learn by uh, listening and talking with others. Uh, and when you do it at the same time, you can talk about and write papers based at memos based on um, what you're doing in your field requirement. Um, by locating ourselves in Washington, D.C., um, we uh, put you in a position to intern or work for pay um, at a staggeringly diverse set of, of um, uh, uh, job opportunities from the political parties to MCs to NGOs, to interest groups, to Capitol Hill, the White House, uh, you name it. Um, as, as big and broad as, as Washington, D.C. is, is as big as the opportunities for your field requirement. And, and that's one of the things that makes us uh, unique as a school is that we are able to um, 
integrate um, um, old learning classroom learning. Thank you, Cornfield. I don't know it. Do legislative affairs graduates always work on the Hill, or do we have any that are working in the private sector? Uh, as a practical matter, about half of our students work uh, on the Hill uh, at a given time, but many of them uh, work in the lobbying arena um, uh, in a variety of capacities, doing everything from groups to straight on lobbying to PAC management. Um, uh, so they're all over the arena, uh, but certainly uh, uh, engaged in uh, legislative-related activities. Um, we actually have, or historically, we've had a large number of our students come to the Legislative Affairs Program after first starting in our PAC Management Certificate Program. Uh, and in that program, they can take five courses and then transfer all of those against their requirements for the Legislative Affairs Program. All right. Thank you, Dr. Billet. Uh, Dr. Cornfield, I have a question, and I think you can speak for three programs about the flexibility if you have, uh, say, you want to be working on a campaign or if you have to be working from January to July. Um, can you just speak to the flexibility of the program, please? We do best to accommodate students who get the opportunity to do their field work and or who who have uh, who've completed their field requirement but but have an opportunity to to learn in in uh, um, uh, an ongoing campaign somewhere else uh, the the um, ability uh, of of go out on leave um or or having i forget what me mary knows the term for for uh, keeping your 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 uh, student status alive while while being away for uh, a semester um it's something that that's built into the way we operate uh, and and um we we really um smile upon, upon it mary can you just in case you're curious Sorry, I think I just spoke over you. I just said the continuous enrollment was what Dr. Cornfield was was referring to, with keeping your student active, um, students active, but taking some time to do other things. So it's called being in continuous enrollment. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. After Billet, does GSPM help people get find a job? Um, it certainly does. Um, uh, you can your skills. In in a number of ways uh, here in Washington. One is to go and do things. Uh, the other is to study about things. What we do is we encourage you to go work in the arena while you're studying about it. Uh, the good thing about that, too, is that it gives you a broad overview of what the whole of the arena looks like. If you go work as a legislative assistant on Capitol Hill, you will certainly learn a lot about what's going on but you will not come away with the sort of comprehensive knowledge that you would otherwise acquire in the degree program. And we believe that you can accelerate your career advancement by incorporating the, the practical knowledge uh, with the theoretical and applied work uh, in the program. All right. Thank you, Steve. And with that, I'm going to wrap up today's webinar. I thank you for joining us. So please note these important dates for applications, April 15th for summer admission, June 15th for admission, and November 15th for spring admission. Feel, please feel free to contact us with any questions, and if we do not get your questions today, um, we will certainly email you with the answers to that. Um, also, contact us if you'd like to sit on class, meet with any of these program directors, and also don't forget to contact us with uh, on Facebook and Twitter. We look forward to hearing from you and assisting you in your graduate school decision. Thank you again for attending the webinar, and we appreciate your interest in our programs. Thank you.